What is going on guys? Pasco Show here, back to Rational Legends, making video. I really hope you guys are having a good time. I've been super busy, I haven't had time to make videos, I've only been able to play the game. I have a baby now and it's very, very hard to find time to do your thing. Yesterday I was able to complete the City of Cintranos and I was so excited and then I opened my chest and I found rubbish. I found uh, one epic book, five star chicken, two chaos or and this avatar. Apparently the first reward is always going to be the avatar and then from the second one you have a chance to get the third star, the fifth star, the sixth star, depends uh, from your luck but I don't think uh, you are guaranteed to get one of these, I'm not sure. So I got pretty disappointed after I opened the chest. I didn't know that uh, on your first one you can't get uh, the blessings. But I might be wrong. Let me know if you guys already got the blessings on your first uh, chest. Now what I'm going to talk in this video is uh, the three last stages that for me were the hardest in this rotation. And it's this one here, stage 14. I managed to do with this champion that funny enough I can do like free to play. Uh, three epics and two legendary one was a fusion one was a guarantee and all i have to do in this stage was gear this champion here with my best uh, hp nuking gear let me know if guys if you want me to do a video about this stage i can do it for you but i want to focus on another stage phase gonna be stage 19 but the other stage where i was struggling a lot was this one and i took these three champions to level 60 in the last few days and then i have to get him in a special way with stone skin because you got two edge mod in the second wave but once i get those champion stone skin it was very fine so let me know if you need help with this i might make a video as well what i'm gonna do today i'm gonna do a video about this stage stage 19 and the reason why is because this stage is super hard but i found a strategy to do it very consistently without too much rng involved and i'm gonna show you the gear i'm gonna show you what you have to do in order to do this regularly you need these specific champions you can probably swap nazana out in this team but you need these four champions right here and if you don't have two daiti you need to have another strong nuker in this spot but in this uh, option here you don't have uh, you don't have really good dps apart from daiti so let me jump into the build i'm gonna show you exactly how i'm gonna build them so i'm gonna start with uh, the first champion Nazara has to be the champion that goes first and you need to build it in stun set and also one to stone skin if it's possible so i got this set saved up here already so this is gonna be the set i'm gonna equip this and these are the total stats we have 60,000 hp 4700 defense 277 speed but i also have to take in account the Cursed bonus. I only have uh, two bonuses max out is uh, speed and in your defense and now I'm working on critical damage and then I'm going to work on accuracy and resistance. So you need around 320 to place your diva. So I have a low accuracy but it's still good enough. I think you have 80% chance. So it's good enough. It's not mandatory to land the decrease attack because most of the enemies are HP nuking enemy or defense uh, nuking enemy so the second champion in order of speed is gonna be Sinescal. he's building frost set and merciless set for pieces because you want to refresh the cooldown of this skill okay but it's not mandatory to have the merciless the most important is the frost because when you're gonna place the provoke on the enemy team they're gonna attack you and you have a chance to freeze them so these are the total stats on him we have uh, 294 speed 389 uh, accuracy okay and then trying to make as tanky as you can but focus on these stats first and then we're gonna have this champion here i can't pronounce this word so i'm gonna call him bound i think his name is hot bound but i can't say the first word for some reason so i'm gonna call him bound and i'm gonna select this gear on him that is basically just the gear that i have on uh, newt so it's a defensive nuking gear it's not mandatory to have this uh, it doesn't do a lot of damage and you will see in the run so give him whatever gear you want but trying to make him to be the third fastest he basically has to go before the daiti and now i'm gonna show you how i'm gonna build the daiti so one is gonna be built with my trunda gear the gear that i had on trunda for hydra 
and it's gonna be this one here okay so i'm gonna show you this that this is one of my best set guys in terms of speed and attack so i know it's not gonna be easy to achieve but you have a look in the run and you tell me if you need as much attack i think he's actually okay to go with less stats because you will see in the run how much damage i'm gonna do so total set is 7000 attack 240 speed 284 critical damage and we also ignore 20 percent of the defense for the accuracy you need accuracy but he also plays increased accuracy buff on himself before attacking so you don't need to have 300 you can have like 220 250 should be fine and then for the second day i'm gonna give me this set that is basically the set that i got on rotos and because i have two mercy accessories i basically have a six piece mercy with the accessories so total stats on this one are 5000 attack on this one, 257 speed, so it's 3 speed slower than bound, and then we have 286 accuracy and 307 critical damage. Now in terms of mastery, let me tell you this, you don't need mastery on this champion if you have the gear. If you have a lot of gear, you don't need mastery. If you're lacking the gear stats like I do, go with full mastery otherwise you're gonna lock into damage speed etc you're not gonna make it but you can see how i have uh, unfinished masteries on all of them some of them do not even have mastery like this guy i haven't even started the mastery so this is what i have to say of mastery if you're lacking the gear you have to give masteries if you have strong gear you don't need to have full masteries and now let me talk about blessing so i have a lot of blessing in this team the lowest blessing is four star Obviously, if you don't have a blessing, you're going to lack on those uh, HP defense. So I don't know if you're going to be able to reach those stats easily, but I can't remove the blessing. So I'm sure it can be done without blessing because I've seen some of my clanmates, they have the same champion, but no blessing, but they have insane gears. That's the thing. So it's the same option as the mastery. If you have strong, strong gear, you don't need to have high blessings. And then I have this champion ascender as well. I have plus two, plus two as plus one. But let me show you the run so you know exactly what is happening. So we're going to go into the run. And I'm going to show you what you have to do every single time. Because it might take you a little bit to get to, um, you know, to the final stage. But, uh, but this guy doesn't rely on RNG a lot. So what we have to do is we have to place the decrease attack on those stars, at least one of them. And also, if you can land the stun on Taras, is fine. You get the counter here. So what you do now, you get the provokes out. And now with him, you're going to target the Taras, at least one. Let's see if I can place the block active skill on both Taras. Let's see. Okay, I did. Because I placed block active skill now, they're not going to counter me. That means I can go full blast with the Daidi. And I'm going to start with the first one put increase attack on me and then i'm gonna target especially here you want to land the decrease defense now we got the uh extra toe because we land all the decrease defense even though you don't see a decrease defense here this looking defense got landed but then it got transferred to us so it still count as a land that's why you get the extra turn and then you go again and you shoot killer or very close to killing her okay now here you have uh, two options you can nuke again with this skill or you can take your time and you know do maybe you want to nook taras first do whatever is um, easy for you i'm gonna start with the taras she's almost dead so i'm gonna kill her again i mean quickly with uh, one of those other champions okay see she got a provoke you have to hope that uh, one of the taras get the provokes uh sorry the freeze if you can now i'm gonna place the ally protection here i'm gonna heal this champion again and now with him i'm gonna do this skill that does a bit of damage nothing too crazy but you know it's something and then i'm gonna just do the one here we kill the second uh the first taras and then i'm gonna attack again i'm gonna do this skill again get the extra turn but you don't want to be too quick because you want to make sure you have the uh, skill available for the next stage Oh, here we go. I got the, I got a lucky. <laughs> so I killed them too quickly. Now I don't have the skill ready. So I have to start it again. So I killed them too quickly. I'm going to do it again. So I'm going to show you what you have to do again. So I'm going to land the provoke. Let's see if we can land the block of the skill. Wow, we got lucky. Uh, we landed on just them two. 
But guys, if you land a stun on these Taras and you have a, a decreased attack on these Taras, you only have to target this champion because you only need active uh, block active skill on him. This Taras is stunned, you know what I mean? So it's very easy to get to this scenario with this setup. Now we go again. This time I'm not going to do the AoE with, um, with him because you've seen that I killed them too quickly. So I'm just going to go on Taras. I need to make sure that this champion gets the provokes and that he gets the increase attack, uh, the A3 available. Okay, we got a freeze there. So now we, I want to kill um, Staltus because um, he's going to get a turn very soon and he doesn't have any uh, active skill. So we kill, I mean, we did the good damage. Okay, I'm going to kill him like that. We lost our buff. Let's see if he's going to be the one. Okay, I'm going to attack like this. He can freeze as well. So let's see if you can freeze uh, with the one. Well, we didn't freeze. So I'm going to do this. Get the one going. We got an extra turn. Amazing. Oh, no. Okay, no, actually, that's fine. That's fine. This is actually fine because I got time now to kill her. Just need to make sure I stun this um, Taras before he goes crazy. But this Taras is not going to do a lot of damage if um, he used the A3. Look, see, you survive, so it's fine. It's actually good. Now we freeze him. Amazing. We are good. This champion can only do the one. And we're going to kill him straight after. Actually, I'm going to target her first. Just like that. And now I'm going to kill Taras slowly. Okay, so it's a bit tricky. You can't be too fast, otherwise you don't have the skill available. But this one here is the easiest uh, stage, in my opinion. What you do, you start with the uh, decrease attack, and then you go with the provokes, and then you start nuking them. You have to hope that you get the decrease defense on those, uh, uh, you know, green affinity champion because you might do a weak hit. Let's see. Okay, I got lucky, and then you start targeting them because you have that provoke. I'm gonna do this skill now, and then next turn I'm gonna do the block active skill. I'm gonna buff with him, and I might do this one again. I wanna kill them as quick as possible because those champions here they're very annoying. They're gonna do if they do a critical hit, they attack the whole team, and it's a bit annoying. Okay, so we. We got we got a good damage now. I don't want to be too quick like earlier, so I'm gonna protect him. Let's see if I can kill him. Okay, perfect. Now I need some wickets from this deity. Oh my god, I killed them too quickly. But anyway, you got the idea. Uh, what you have to do here, basically, when you get to this stage, you need to have all your skill available. You need to use the skill or the A3, and you need to land one stun. It's so important to land one stun. If you don't land one stun, I think you're gonna lose. So let me try and land the stun on Karato. Okay, we land one stun here. See? Now, uh, G1 passive proc. So in this case, now, if I had this skill available, I could have provoked them all except for Rima. And that would give me the one turn to do. You know, they only do a one basically. They're gonna. Uh, Yumeko is gonna block your skills. So once you use all your skill. You're not going to use them again because Yumeko is going to block your skill. You can't CC uh, Yumeko because she has the veil. But if you are strong enough with your Daiti, you're going to be able to one shot, especially this Arima here, because you can place the degrees different on her. This one, she's going to stay alive. But if you're lucky, you're going to kill Karato to get her. So I'm going to go back to this uh, um, part and I'm going to show you how to do it here.
all right guys i managed to get all my skill available for this uh, next wave this uh, this lady almost died so but i just want to show you this how to get to this part hopefully i'm gonna land one uh stun hopefully let's see Ooh, okay i didn't land the stun so see this is annoying because now i can't use this skill and i can't provoke them so the best thing i can do is trying to maybe do damage to this champion and then i'm gonna buff with him land the decreased defense and then you can try use this skill maybe on uh karado i think or maybe jinwon is the most annoying one okay we got jinwon and arima then i'm gonna buff again and i'm gonna try and nuke them down unfortunately you can't get the extra turn because um because yumeko can be uh you know can be the buff that's why you don't get the extra turn but you know it's not looking too bad i think we're actually gonna be able to finish it like that just like that even if you lose uh, your whole your whole team now it's fine because i mean your dps is fine because you make is not gonna kill your team so you can see that even if i failed the provokes at the start i was able to do it if you have too strong daiti so here we go guys uh, this is my strategy uh, like I mentioned, I don't know if you can replace any of these champions. Like, maybe you can replace Nazana. You replace Nazana with uh, another champion that does AoE damage. They can land the uh, stun set uh, on the last wave. And uh, you're not going to have the degrees attack. So this skill here won't be 100% on, on enemy with degrees attack. But uh, it only means that you have to try again until you get uh, the right RNG you get the block this skill on both Taras. you see seen at the start of the run i failed three or four times and i just started again don't even bother if you don't land the active skill on Taras's, both of them don't even bother start it again you need to make sure they don't counter your deity so you need to have them stand or with the block of this skill you can probably also use this champion he plays freezes um but i still think the stands are better because you don't want the freeze on the whole team. Otherwise, G1 is going to put block debuffs on everybody. So guys, this is my strategy. Let me know if you have any question. This is the gear that I have on my Daiti. You tell me if it's overkill. I think it was just enough to go through the waves. But actually, I hold up a lot of damage. If you kill them too quickly, it's not good. So probably this damage is actually too much. So you can probably go with less damage. And even if you do all your skill, you're going to do every wave in like three, four turns. So you go your skill back uh, to zero. You need to be fast. You need to be at uh, around 280 speed with the fastest champion. Uh, the champions in the wave, they go around 210, I think, speed, 220 speed. So you need to be faster than that. But try to be also a bit faster so you might get uh, more turns compared to the enemies. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, the Frost set is amazing on this champion because uh, after he provokes, he's going to get attack and you have a chance to face the enemies. And this guy is the MVP, to be honest. Uh, this block at this skill, the freezes on day one, they're going to help you a lot. And he also does a bit of damage because I got him in little sets. I'm going to also show you my uh, bonus area from here. You can see how I got those two max out and then i'm gonna start with this one the 30 percent critical damage and then i'm gonna go with accuracy and the resistance because i believe that these three here they're gonna boost your damage by a lot yes yeah, speed is gonna boost your damage because you're gonna get more turn and then in your defense and critical damage and if you kill the waves if you kill your enemy faster you're gonna have a high chance to succeed any stage of the series in tronos guys that's it for this video let me know if you guys have any question drop a like if you found this content helpful always stay safe and i'll catch you soon see ya